Harry Kane, hello, how are you doing? I'm all good, you? Yeah, very well, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're here as part of Coca-Cola's Winnable Giveable campaign, in which every time a customer wins a ball, Coca-Cola donate one to street games. So tell us a little bit about why that is so close to your heart. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, football has been a huge part of my life uh, since I was a kid. So, um, yeah, it's so important for kids nowadays to be able to have footballs, to play, play on the streets, play on the local pitches, uh, because that's what kind of where my my base started and that's what allowed me to, to do what I'm doing now, which is living the dream of, of playing as a professional footballer. And speaking of playing football as a child, there is that iconic image of you with now your wife and uh, David Beckham at his academy back in the day. Was he one of your England heroes growing up and which other players inspired you as a child? Yeah, no, David Beckham was my, my idol growing up for sure. Uh, obviously being England captain, uh, just loved the way he played, wore his heart on the sleeve. Um, scored some big goals for us uh, as a country and just loved the way he conducted himself on the pitch and off the pitch as well. So, um, yeah, all them players, obviously, uh, Owen, Rooney, um, got the pleasure of playing with Rooney as well, so that was pretty special. All, all these great England players, um, yeah, it was a, kind of an honour to watch them and, and like I say, to, to be able to play with someone like Wayne was uh, a truly special feeling. And of course, just like Rooney and Beckham, you now wear the captain's armband for England. When uh, you inherited that from from Wayne Rooney, did he offer you any sort of advice or? Well, he was great from kind of the first, my first camp, he, he gave me a phone call after the camp just to kind of let me know what it's like to be an England player, what it's like to maybe have a bit more scrutiny in the public eye and, and just told me to keep working hard and doing what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, obviously uh, Wayne was great. I can only learn of someone like him. He had so much experience as, as a footballer at the highest level. So I just, when I was there training, I just tried to kind of see what he was doing, see how he conducted himself. And I'd like to think I've, I've taken some of that into, into my leadership roles as well. And how do you think he'll react when you eventually take his goal record? Well, yeah, no, I think still got a few more to go, obviously, but that's a, a great aim to try and achieve. And uh, he's one of them guys that will be proud, I think. You know, he's, he's not uh, a selfish player at all. He, he gave everything for the team. And I think he'd be delighted for someone like me to, to go and beat it. And um, so, yeah, obviously he's still a little bit away. Uh, he was one of our greatest ever strikers, if not the greatest ever striker, so even to be spoke about in that company is, is a, a nice feeling. And as we mentioned about England heroes, you're now captain of the team. There's a lot of players in the squad now who will have come through the ranks over the last few years looking up to you, P players like you know Jaden Sancho, Phil Foden. Um, so what's it like to play with them? Like How good are they? Yeah, they're great players, you know. Uh, Jaden, Phil, uh, Mason, Jack, Deck. You know, we've got so many young, good players coming through and uh, they've been in the squad now for a little while and uh, you can see it in training, you can see they want to be on the ball, they want to express themselves uh, and it's the same on the pitch. So uh, we've got a great squad, we've got a great mixture of kind of young talent and kind of experienced players who have maybe had a couple of major tournaments as well. So um, I'm only 27 but I feel like I'm 35 in that squad because they're all so young. But uh, no, it's certain times, you know, but it's still, there's still a lot of hard work to, to be gained, there's still a lot of improvement to be gained and, and them boys know that. So. Uh, they just got to keep their heads down, keep doing what they're doing, and they're going to be fantastic players for for a long time. And uh, quite a few of them are going to be playing in the Champions League final, which is now obviously an all English tie, as it was a couple of years ago when when Tottenham made it there. What does that say about the current level of uh, English football and the England squad? Yeah, it's great. It's great for our, our national players to have that exposure in the biggest games. That's what we want to do because if we want to win major tournaments, we're going to have to play the best teams and and the best players in Europe in the world. So. Um, delighted for them to, to be, go and have that experience, especially at a lot of them are very young age. Uh, and hopefully they can use that to help us as a country in the summer and, and the World Cup next year as well. So um, it shows the level kind of where the Premier League's at. It's at a very high level at the minute and obviously where we're at, at as a nation. We've got some great players coming through. So um, yeah, exciting times. But of course, like I touched on earlier, there's still a long way to go and we still need to work extremely hard to, to be successful in the summer. Going into the Euros, obviously um, uh, the squad has changed a lot since the last Euros, five years ago now, and since the World Cup. Um, but there was a lot of positivity going into the World Cup um, and obviously England did, did very well. Um, how's the mood changed since then among the England camp? And like, is there, do you feel higher expectations going into this tournament than the previous one? Yeah, I think so. I think before Russia in 2018, there wasn't too much expectation on us, you know. Uh, we just crashed out of the Euros two years before that, so we was kind of in a re rebuild phase. And um, to do what we've done and get to a semi-final was obviously extremely, extremely good and, and great to have that experience. But obviously coming away, losing in the semi-final gives, gives you that little bit of 
extra fire inside to go and, and go all the way in the next tournament and we've had to wait an extra year obviously but we're in a good place you know we've we've learned from that I feel like the squad's improved since then as well uh, mentally physically we've got more experience more more ta um, a bit more kind of players like playing at the highest level playing in the biggest games um, so yeah I'm excited I'm excited for it and I feel like we're in a good place but as always we're, we're going to have to handle the pressure and handle that expectation if we want to be a top team. And speaking of that semi-final uh, loss against Croatia, there seems to be a, almost a rivalry developing between us and Croatia with the Nations League game as well, where you scored the winner, and the fact that they're now in our group. Is that a game that the England boys have their eye on in particular? Yeah, for sure. Croatia are a great team. They've got some fantastic players, and obviously uh, they beat us in, in, the World Cup, uh, in the World Cup, which hurt a lot. Uh, we obviously got done them in the, in the Nations League, which was nice for a nice feeling for us. But obviously the Euros is a massive tournament and I think it's our first game, so it's going to be a very tough game. But it's a good chance to see where we're at as a squad and, and if we can get a good result and, and win that game, it will set us up nicely for the rest of the tournament and give us a load of confidence. Now I'd like to talk about Ryan Mason. So you came through the Tottenham Academy with Ryan Mason, you played in the first team with him. He moved on, suffered a very sad injury that led to an early retirement. And now he's returned, done his coaching badges, and now he's your manager. So what's it like to play under um, Ryan? And how does he compare to your previous Tottenham managers, Mourinho, Pochettino? Yeah, I mean, Ryan's been great. Uh, I mean, Ryan's one of my, my best mates, even away from football. We've always kept in touch. We've always had a great relationship. So uh, I'm delighted for him to have this opportunity. Of course, his, his playing career got cut short uh, in a tragic way, which was so sad for, for him. And uh, it's great for him to have this opportunity to, to get an early early role in coaching um, and he's going to use this experience to for the rest of his life and, and wherever he ends up, if he stays or goes to another club or gets another first team job, this experience will be vital for him and I think he's handled it really well. It's not easy for a 29 year old to come in and, and act like the boss and, and be the boss and, uh, and have your own ideas and, and put your own identity into things but he's done that great and um, like I say, we, we, we get on really well. Um, he's obviously taken stuff from Maurizio because obviously he played under Maurizio for, for a long time. So you can see some stuff in training which are a little bit similar. But he has his own ideas, he has his own way of doing things. Um, and yeah, we just want to win for him. We want to win these last three games and, and give him kind of the best opportunity, whether it's now or in five years, ten years, to, to have a great coaching career. Do you fancy yourself as a manager one day or are you, are you, are you more set on the NFL? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Coaching doesn't really interest me at the moment, but I know a lot of players have said that and then they get to kind of mid 30s and then they start thinking about doing it. So I'd never say never, but at the moment I've definitely got more of an eye on the NFL, trying to maybe pursue that as a, as a career after, after football. So, um, but look, it's still quite a ways away, hopefully. Uh, I want to be playing at the highest level for at least another seven, eight years. So. Um, we'll wait and see, but yeah, um, not thinking about coaching yet. On the NFL, um, you obviously have mentioned that you maybe fancy yourself as a kicker in the future. Um, your hero, Tom Brady, um, obviously won a Super Bowl with the Bucks um, a few months ago. He is often mentioned in the debate of who's the best athlete of all time. Where do you stand on that? And, and can you even maybe compare him to players like Messi, Michael Jordan, whoever? Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he's definitely the best the NFL's ever seen, that's for sure, you know, to do what he's done. And, and I think this year, for him to go to a new team and, and continue um, winning the Super Bowl, it's, it's not easy and it shows the type of leader he is and the type of player he is. So, um, yeah, and I think he's right up there in, in the greatest athletes of all time, you know, like, like touching there, Michael Jordan would be up there, uh, Ronaldo and Messi would be up there. Um, so yeah, you know, he's, he's a great guy. I've, I've had the pleasure of talking to him and getting to know him a little bit and uh, just a real down-to-earth person. And you can see why any team that he goes to, he, he kind of got that infectious way about him just to win and, and to be positive. And, um, and you saw that this season with him going to the Buccaneers and winning. Well, at the rate you're both going, maybe you'll get to play alongside him one day in the future. <laughs> I don't know, he's getting a, he's getting a little old now, isn't yeah. he? But he seems, to be, uh, he seems to be carrying on as long as possible. So he's still in good shape, still at the top of his game, so why not? But uh, if he's still playing in seven or eight years, I think, I think uh, that'd be truly, truly special. What has he told you, and maybe have you given him anything that you've learned from football that he can take into NFL? Yeah, not really. I mean, like, we, we just kind of had, and I met him after the Super Bowl when, uh, when they won in Atlanta against the, uh, the LA Rams. Um, so yeah, we just had a, a brief chat, but I think just 
kind of the way he talks, you know, even kind of when we message on Instagram, him giving me kind of uh, little good luck messages before big games or if, if things didn't go quite well, he, he kind of just says stuff to, to keep me positive and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, you can just tell he's a real leader and obviously if I was an NFL player, I'd, I'd love to play kind of alongside him and uh, he's one of them people that you would give your all for and you can see that, that infectious way about him and that's what uh, he's done with any team that he's, he's been at, that hard work and dedication has, has really taken him and any team he's played into the top. Very few athletes cross over sports ever. You've got Michael Jordan playing basketball and baseball. If you were to play in the NFL one day, you'd be the first to do both. And is that extra motivation for you to make that? I think so. I think, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, to be able to play in the Premier League at, at the highest level and, and world football at the highest level, to then hopefully one day play in the NFL, you'd, um, yeah, to be able to cross paths and and play two major sports at, at the highest level would be an incredible feeling, an incredible experience. So, um, yeah, that, that's definitely a motivation for me to be one of the first people to ever do that. And um, hopefully, like I say, it's still early days yet, but kind of late 30s, if, if I'm still in good enough shape, I'd love to give it a go and, and, and really try and take it on as a career. And family keen to move to America, is that part oh, of Oh, we haven't really spoke about it yet, to be honest, but... Um, I mean, that's just a, that'll be a conversation further down the line, but uh, we, we like America. Um, I love American sports, so um, yeah, for me, it'd be great. And also at Tottenham, there seems to be, the mood seems to be really positive at the moment, um, especially among the three Welsh lads at the club. You've got Joe Roden, Ben Davis, and Gareth Bale, also known as the Welsh Mafia. How did Gareth Bale's arrival at the club um, change the mood and kind of inspire a lot of players? who maybe haven't you know, met him before, you obviously knew him already. But. Yeah, no, he's been great. Obviously, whenever a player comes in with his calibre, who's won the trophies that he's won and played in the biggest games and produced some of the goals and moments that he's produced, uh, it was a great moment for, for the club and for the players, for him to come in and, and play for us, you know? And uh, he's been great. He's obviously uh, a lot more experienced now than when I first knew him years and years ago. So. Uh, we, got, we get on really well. He's great for the younger players in the squad as well to maybe look up to and have a bit of guidance from. Um, so he's been great and obviously whenever he's been playing he's produced and, and played well for the team and worked hard for the team and obviously come up with some great goals as well. So uh, hopefully he can keep that up from now until the end of the season. And will it be the end of this season? <laughs> or? Who knows? That's, that's obviously yeah. his decision and um, I think he's got one year left on his Madrid contract. So. I mean, that's something he's going to have to discuss, and, um, but of course we love having him at Spurs. Um, he does seem a lot more relaxed uh, now he's come back to Spurs on this loan deal. Um, why do you think he just he seems happier here than he did towards the end of his time at Madrid? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Obviously, he'd been at Madrid for quite a few years and, and sometimes things just maybe run their course and, and that might have been what happened at Madrid. You know, he, he had some amazing moments there, won the biggest trophies in the in the world, so um, yeah, maybe he just fancied the change, fancied coming back home where he had been before, he's loved by the fans, so um, yeah, again, I'm, I'm speaking for him, I'm not mm. entirely sure his situation, but I know he enjoys being here and playing in front of, uh, well, not in front at the moment, but for the, for the Spurs team. Well, hopefully by the end of the season you will get to play in front of a few fans at least. Um, yeah, I think, the, I think the last couple we're going to get some fans in, which will be great. Harry Kane, thanks so much for your time. No worries, thank you.